I know it's something that's incredibly hard to believe, right? But next year I'm going to be 40. No, no, not 30. No, 40. I know. I know you can't believe it, but yeah, it's true. But what it does mean is that it's going to be 10 years, right, since I went to Madrid for my birthday. My dad took me there and we went to Bernabeu to watch a Real Madrid game. Ronaldo was playing there. Brilliant. Amazing. Amazing experience. But the reason I'm talking about that is because one thing that we noticed at the ground they had was a singing section for the home fans, right? And it was above the goal and it was, I can't remember how many people it would have been, let's say 2,000, something like that, 2,000, like a block of fans. And they had, they were just singing the whole game. And it was like, I don't know if they had a drum, but it was just constant singing, 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 singing. And I really liked it. it in, in fact, it, it kind of outsung the away fans because obviously much like English football, the away fans are pretty noisy away games uh, throughout. Whereas the home fans typically a little bit quieter. They, they tend to watch the game. It's just a different atmosphere, isn't it, when you're at home? A bit of atmosphere. So obviously, when Real Madrid were winning, then the, the, the atmosphere and the whole ground picked up. But for the whole game, even from the first minute when the ball was kicked, this section of fans was singing and making so much noise. And it just created an atmosphere. It really did. It, it, it was good. And I really admired it. And I remember saying to my dad at the time, and I think he said the same to me, we, we, we should be having something like that. Why aren't we in English football doing this? Um, now, of course, there are grounds that do have it, but it's not that common. You don't really hear too much about singing sections. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, now, it's now come out that West Ham are in talks with Newham Council to have a singing section at West Ham. Now, I can understand some people thinking, why do we need that for? What, what's the point? But I, as I say, when I think back to that Real Madrid experience... I think it'd be great for West Ham. I really, I think it'd be great for the, the London Stadium. It's one thing that we get criticised for a, a, a quite a bit about, isn't it? The atmosphere. It's not that intense. It, it can times be a bit quiet. Now, where I sit, I actually sit right by the away fans in that corner, you know, by the where that wall is, which I can't stand, that bloody wall. But so the atmosphere though, right on there, though, is pretty noisy because it's everyone's standing the whole game. They're giving it to the away fans. It's quite noisy, much like it always is when you're typically near the away fans. But I have also sat in other parts of the ground and I found it very quiet and very difficult to, to generate noise as well. It's, it, it is a bit of a struggle. So I actually do think it's not a bad idea. As long as they put it in the right place in the ground, I, I wouldn't put it near the away fans as such because it's kind of noisy there anyway. They put it at the other side and had a big singing section. I think it could work quite well. Now, it's quite interesting because <clears throat> it now seems that these talks are actually progressing. It's been an update from Sean Weston on it, um, on Claren Hugh, and he was basically saying that from the minutes of the meeting that West Ham are now in progress in these talks. They want to introduce it. It could be well be next season, I believe. And also the only issue at the moment is the police have got a bit of an issue with it. I'm not quite sure what that means. I don't know why it would be such an issue for the police, but that apparently has, has been brought up that they, they, they need to consider that. Um, I, I don't quite get what that means. I don't know why it'd be such an issue. As I say, if, if it was right next to the away fans, I might get it a bit more, but it's the other side of the ground. I don't know why it'd be an issue. However, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on it, because, as I say, <clears throat> my experience of it has always been pretty positive. I do feel like it would help the stadium. The London Stadium's not perfect. We know that. Far from it. There, there's still issues with that ground. It, it, it could do, <clears throat> do with a lot more work and making it more of a football stadium. But if we could try and make it noisier and make it feel like a bit more of a fortress and a tough place to come, I, I, I'm all for it. I really am. And... It'd be interesting to know what these plans exactly are in terms of the detail. At the moment, it's a bit loose, but it does seem like it's serious that West Ham do want to introduce it. <clears throat> I, for one, as I say, would be firmly behind it. I think it'd be really good. And I'd like to know, um, generally, as a fan's view, what you think. Like, what you think would be a good idea about it. Now, look, I understand change is always a little bit awkward. It's always a bit tough. And when you think of singing section, you think, well, that's not West Ham. We don't have that. But I think it's one of those you need to be open-minded with and then consider the impact it will have on the pitch. As well, <clears throat> having having fans making the ground a bit noisier, as I say, make it a bit more comfortable for the visiting fans and the players. I I just think it would be a, a positive step forward, and and hopefully sort of get rid of that tag that London Stadium's got a bad atmosphere. Because I actually don't think it does have a bad atmosphere. I think in general, I think it's pretty good. I think it's fine when we're doing well there. I mean, if you think about some of the nights we've had at that ground, they've been unbelievable. Some of the moments have created a lot of noise. Um, to say, but having something that's a constant singing, I go through song after song after song and singing throughout the game, I just feel like it could actually work really well. And also, it encourage obviously other parts of the ground to get involved. 
I, I think it'd be a real positive step forward. But I do obviously want to know what your thoughts are on it because I think it's an interesting topic. And also, we're doing an article on it on the <clears throat> website. So I want to get some quotes as well from from yourself to let us know what you think and whether you think it's a good idea and we can have a little talk about it because obviously I understand some fans will like it some might not be on the fence whatever so it'd be interesting to get your perspective on it also in other news of course is Lucas Piquetta um I mean this this feels like it's just snowballing now doesn't it and it, I, I talked about it in the video yesterday in the Tottenham preview that it's it feels like the walls are closing a little bit on him. Uh, and you can kind of get that from that statement. He's put a statement out, basically, Paqueta, and he has, which I'm sure you've seen, <clears throat> it's all over the news. Uh, basically, he's, he's instructed his lawyers to um, speak to the FA and they want them to carry out an investigation as to who, how these leaks of the investigation are coming out. I found it all a bit odd, the statement, I'm going to be honest. Um, I felt like, because at one point he's saying <clears throat> that he's annoyed that the someone's leaking information about the case, but then he's calling it inaccurate. So I couldn't quite understand that aspect of it, whether it's true or not, then I don't, I don't understand it. But I do get his point that there does seem to be information being leaked out now to the press, which isn't helping the situation. Um, so I, I do get where he's coming from, but it does feel uh, like it's getting to him big time now. We've noticed it, obviously, in his performances, but um, you know, that statement was clearly um, one of a man that's under a lot of pressure with this. He obviously referred to it as a huge, uh, it's having a huge impact on him and his family. Um, and, and I feel for him. It's, it's horrible to see it. I mean, regardless of what's going on in the case and stuff, it's just not nice to see this. Um, you know, we want our player to be enjoying his life and, hope, and this, this not to be happening. But I don't know. It just, it didn't feel good reading that at all. It, it was quite worrying. And I, I found it just a bit odd, the whole thing. Um, to be honest, the statement I couldn't quite get the grips of what's happening because he's he sort of suggesting that it's all false a little bit, or it's not quite true. Some of it is, it is, and and you know, there's some of the things we've heard. Obviously, you know, they come from his family. They've come out and spoken publicly about what's going on. So I'm talking about his uncle here, and there was evidence they've made payments and things. I mean, you know, we talk about the media as well. We talked about he's not happy with the media. Obviously, we kind of feed into that a little bit here, don't we? Because we're talking about it, but at the same time, you know, I'm not reporting news. I'm not going, oh my god, I've got some inside knowledge. I'm just talking about what's coming out in the press. So um, it is slightly different, of course. We we are just talking about it, but nevertheless, uh, it is a delicate subject. <clears throat> I mean, not one I want to keep going on about, really, unless there's any sort of development. But it's hard not to talk about it because it has felt recently. It's constant. Like a new revelation comes out and statement comes out from here and Brazil have then summoned him and all this sort of stuff. So it, it is looking quite bleak, isn't it, at the moment, uh, the whole situation. And it'll be interesting today to see what uh, Lopetegui does because he's got a big decision to make over Piquetta. Does he play him? What's his mind? Where is it? Is it is it in, in a good place? It's a shame because I felt like he put in his best performance of the season <clears throat> against Ipswich. He looked a little bit more like the Piquetta we know. Obviously not 100%, but he certainly he looked a bit more confident. He looked like he was enjoying himself out on the pitch at times. Obviously, he got his goal as well. So that's sort of what you want him to see him build on that. But I just feel like this week, you know, he had a torrid time out in Brazil, absolutely slated by their press for his performance and what's going on, of course. He's suspended as well, got himself suspended because he got booked. <laughs> the irony. And, um, of course, it's, and, and he's just a lot, and then he's put this statement out. I just wonder whether his head's in the right place. And I've... And we need to win this game, you know. I'm not saying we need to win it, but we need to. We need a good result, you know. We really need a good result at Tottenham. We want a good, good performance, and we want everyone to be fully focused. And I just get the feeling that Paquetta is not at all. I'd be surprised if he is. But of course, what do I know? I mean, he could be completely relaxed and completely uh, focused on uh, the Tottenham game and have no issues going on at all. But I just struggle to believe that at the moment with what's happening. Uh, and that statement for me just. It felt like a, a person massively under pressure, the walls closing in and just needed to say something. Um, but it feels like there's a lot more twists to come, doesn't it? This Paquetta thing. It feels like there's going to be more. And whatever happens, he's he's standing by the fact he's innocent. There's actually no choice about it. He's going to fight it too for now. So um, it's interesting. But look, we've got a big game today. Uh, London Derby. My word, wouldn't it be something if we can go and get a result? Let's hope we do. Come on, you irons. 